speaks at a variety of different uh, national and state conferences, and I think that in, in all sorts of terms is an expert on this area. Uh, on, in July, the board spent 12 hours total with Brian over two days, um, and there was, I would say, probably 20 to 30 to 40 hours of work before that, where Dr. Carpenter was actually meeting individually with every board member, interviewing them, reading our charter, reading our board minutes and bylaws, and really getting a, um, a good grasp on what we were about to charter school before we actually came to the training. And then we had a follow-up training with him. If you've been in any of the regular board meetings in the last uh, few months, you'll know that there's a uh, podcast at the beginning that the board listens to on a variety of uh, governance issues, and then they have time to discuss if necessary afterwards. That's all from this governance training. Um, the biggest piece of uh, Dr. Carpenter's training was uh, distinguishing between governance and management in an educational institution in charter school. Um, and I think the simplest way to articulate that, and I think that the board has shared in the past, is governance is the word of the board. Um, and it is to, uh, at its core, answer how well questions. How well are we achieving the outcome we're supposed to in our charter? How well are we policy, following these policies um, that have been established? While management primarily <coughs> is the responsibility of the executive director and his team and or committee below him, and his task is to establish the how will of the school. How will we um, approach this program, enact this new policy, um, be successful? This, this it was my own uh, attempt to mirror a, a, a graphic that Dr. Carpenter used in his training. But essentially that black line um, in between the green and the blue areas is the dividing space between governance and management. And the governance level of the board is these, has the sole responsibility of the charter and answering the how well questions. And can establish oversight committees that help it do, it, help it do its job in any number of ways that it desires. Uh, for example, the board has talked about um, a governance committee that actually helps train and onboard um, new board members and uh, make sure that they're compliant with documentation and paperwork. Uh, I've also talked about a fiscal oversight committee. Um, so those are board level committees. <clears throat> Below that line, the management line, the single point of contact between the board and the executive director, or between the board and management and the executive director. And then he has his administrative team and any number of advisory committees that he would like to establish. Now it's important, important, important to note, and Mr. Lindsay is on record as saying so multiple times, uh, he has zero desire to eliminate or detract in any way from the current standing committees, what we were calling standing committees, of course, of operations, curriculum, <coughs> and student services. He uh, desires that stakeholder engagement and input feedback and wants them to continue to meet and help inform the way the school is for. And then there may be other advisory committees in the future based on our There you go. So hopefully that graphic and that training and that context uh, helps explain the reason for the language changes there. This was, um, risk speaking for the board, a unanimous board a decision to make the shift and acknowledge that that was the right way to articulate our governance structure. Um, and so they, they are all on board with that process. So what are the next steps? Um, eventually CDCHS itself, the board, needs to approve the renewal petition. Um, and then we submit to Contra Costa County Board of Education. There is a public hearing. It's much like the original process and then a decision. So when we submit to uh, Contra Costa County Board of Education, we're looking at October 9th right now. If, in fact, the board does approve at the October 8th meeting, of course, that's the board's discretion. Um, in terms of the election cycle issue and our timeline constraints in the most ideal timeline along with that guidance, October 9th will still work. At least that's the, that's the uh, information I'm getting from the county at this point. We are pushing um, that perfect low risk uh, scenario of getting in before and having a board seat. But we still 
still are in that room. They will do a public hearing at their regular board meeting. Um, if in fact it goes the way that we hope, it will actually be October 15th, I believe. None of this is official yet. The county actually has to decide if this is what's projected. Um, there will be a presentation by CPCHS staff to the County Board of Education. And then at their next regular meeting, which I believe is November 5th, again, if the county decides to go this way, they will um, have their own staff, after reviewing our document, present a recommendation to the board, and then the board will vote. Again, the minerals are automatically applied to the county, so there's no um, question mark in terms of how long it will be reviewed. And I think, quite conveniently, uh, that lines up perfectly with our WASP accreditation for six years of our election. So that is my presentation. I've tried to get as much as possible. I hope that was informative and helpful. Um, I think if we're ready to go to that place, we, we, we just love if people want to line up at the mic. I'll make sure it's on. Questions, comments, again, we're going to try to capture everything the board has asked and report back to them about any um, community input tonight. So uh, we take that seriously, and uh, we're here until you're done answering questions. We're asking questions and getting answers and that, and making new suggestions. Reminder, no giant subjects. <laughs>
So we work very collaboratively um, in order to make sure that um, what Clayton Valley does um, to serve the students um, does very well. Um, but one of the things is we've been going back and forth and uh, participating on uh, these comments, and I very much appreciate how much the board and uh, Mr. Lindsay have uh, replied back when I said, you know, this seemed like kind of wonky language to me. I'd really like for us to try to look back at the original charter that was uh, written with a lot of um, with a lot of thought, um, and they've been very amenable to that. So from that perspective, that's that's great. But as I was trying to put some numbers together, I'm getting to it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, it's a, it's a, it, it, that's something I'm working on. Um, in the in earlier parts of the year, my older son that was a student here, so that's the 2012 and 2014, I noticed in the chart, so we were running about 1,800 students overall, and, and we had about 160 students in special education. Now, I think that number includes both the kids with IEPs and the kids with 504s, which you guys would know better than I. What was interesting in that chart that you have also for this most recent data period is that while our overall enrollment numbers have gone up, in fact, I don't know for those of you that don't know, there's a quite a waiting list for students that want to come to this school, which is great. Um, and uh, obviously they take priority for the kids in the attendance area. The challenge is, though, that so we've gone from 1,800 all students to 160 in special ed to now 2,000 all students, of which there's only about 120 in special ed. So we've seen a pretty precipitous drop. And um, I mention this because we're also seeing a drop in what the API performance was. It was actually the only area that we didn't score well. So, being the nerd that I am, I'm trying to put all this together in my mind, and I figure more brains together could help figure that out. Thanks. Our API, special ed, is one of our highest growth areas for academic improvement. Okay. Off the charts, like 70 points, if I have the right number, it's okay. 77 points. Okay. So, one of our highest growth areas was special ed. I'm real proud of that, and that was Great. a big point. English learners, yeah. special ed, uh, and our, our poorest students were some of our highest growth. So uh, I just did a little bit of Good. So so the question really is, so now why have we seen change? And that makes sense, given the program is a small classroom, very intensive, you know, and we work very hard with all the um, members of the collaborative team to make sure that we're getting good goals, measurable goals, I don't know what the county board of education yeah. said. So if, if your numbers of 160 pre charter yeah. including 504, that 120 doesn't include 504. So that and we have a whole lot, we probably have more than 200 kids I was thinking when you include 504. Right. So we're just probably reporting out there right. in special language. We want to make sure that we're yeah. that measuring out yeah. the staff. And, and I will take a look at it because I want to make sure the numbers, if we're doing uh, special ed plus five and four, right. and keep it. You should always do that. Otherwise, we're hurting ourselves. Absolutely. So, thank you. And again, your collaboration with 